some of those uh, in part of my travels here. Peacock with Willows Innovation. Uh, I'm off on a another one of my little uh, little uh, treks here. Uh, my wife uh, dropped me off here uh, up the up the trail, kicked me out of the kicked me out of the car, and said get lost. And <laughs> so here I am. But uh, this time I'm uh, doing a fun little trek. I haven't ever been through this area before. Uh, where I'm going now, I've been. In the vicinity down lower and stuff like that but uh, my goal is there's uh, I'm gonna try to zigzag back and forth here and try to hit there's eight lakes down through this uh, region in this high uh, high mountain valley up here and uh, I'm gonna try to hit them all all eight of them and uh, I don't know if I'll catch any fish or not I haven't done much fishing for a while uh, I wound up, I didn't bring my hat, and I'm really upset about that. I, I don't usually go out without it, hardly, so I feel naked without it. And it's been raining up here most of the day. Uh, right now, it's kind of drizzling off and on. Uh, it'd be nice to have that hat on my head, but I guess I'll do without it for the next few days. But uh, anyway, so this is my uh, trek, kind of a, a lakes trek, I guess you'd call it. So, be a lot through the quakies and some pines and stuff, so uh, yeah, follow along with me and have some fun. Just ran into a bow hunter just up the trail here. He's, uh, I guess it's last day of bow hunt today. Um, he's, uh, or last weekend, I don't know which, but <clears throat> anyway, he's, he's got an elk permit, so he's got him a tree, tree stand up here. We just chatted a, a little on the trail and then he split for his tree stand and I'm heading on downhill to to hit my first lake here so even though the trail here is pretty rocky like it is it's been raining the last few days and uh, the dirt underneath is kind of loose so it's even though it's all rocky and everything it's still pretty slippery <laughs> so I got to be a little sure-footed going down through here well coming out of the uh, Thick quakies and everything open up into some little meadow here and uh, see back over there getting into some kind of cliff areas and we got the, the Utah National or state animal or whatever I guess the cow <laughs> you don't go anywhere in the mountains or whatever without cows grazing for the getting fattened up for the summer so anyway we keep on looks like the trail goes on Back down through here, heading towards our first destination here. Well, there it is, Lizard Lake. Right there. Doesn't look like any water in it. <laughs> but, you know, it's... Uh, first part of September so I'll go take a I'll go take a walk around and see see what's out there I was gonna camp here uh, this first night but I don't know I may move on to somewhere else we'll see how it goes well here's Lizard Lake I just walked across it I didn't even need any faith or anything it's uh, pretty solid but uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, afternoon here. It's about six o'clock, and uh, I don't know. I might just move on just a little bit. <laughs> Talked to a guy 
few minutes ago is up here on a dirt bike and it's pretty pretty mucky sloppy ground but he's doing all right he thought he was the only crazy one out on a rainy day like today but <clears throat> but he doesn't know me I don't really care that much what it's doing if I feel like getting out I just go ahead and do it all look good you know well I'm moving on to where moving on about where I was uh, planning to go tomorrow so I'll be there a little sooner guess I'll be able to play around a little more <laughs> but as you can see some of the maples and some of the trees are starting to turn a little here with the fall the quakies right here haven't really some of them have started to turn but pretty much all green so far be really pretty up here in probably a couple weeks uh, with all the leaves changing but time to head on down the trail here a little more Well, we got us a storm going here. It's raining pretty good. Sheltering up here just for a little bit for this to blow over. I got a ridge line I got to go over, and it's I really want to go over that during the the uh, lightning and everything. I'm just kind of sitting it out here for a bit. Didn't even get a chance to get my poncho on. <laughs> I didn't, didn't have it at the top of my pack like I should have. I kind of uh, extended up my tripod and <coughs> draped my tarp, which was the first thing I could grab. Threw it over the top of my tripod as a for a tent. <laughs> and I'm sitting on my backpack. Yeah, you know, the way it goes. I got caught in, whoa, slippery. <laughs> I got caught in quite the cloud burst there. Pretty heavy lightning and thunder. Pretty heavy rain. And uh, I had my poncho in, in my pack. It wasn't, wasn't at the top. I wound up dumping some other stuff on top of it. And uh, when the burst came out, I was like, I didn't have time to grab it, so I grabbed my PST, my personal survival tarp, and I, uh, I put it on, and uh, I just put it over me and kind of got in some trees, tried to rig it a little bit, and uh, then uh, it was it was pretty pretty rough. I had to get off that ridge. The lightning was pretty, pretty darn intense. So, you know, I, my wife told me when I was getting out of the, my wife told me when I was getting out of the car, she said, uh, she said, why don't you put your poncho on now? And I'm like, uh, I think it's pretty well done raining for the day and no big deal. I'll grab it if I need it. Well, it came a little too quick to grab. <laughs> so now I'm paying for it a little bit. But 
But I, I was able to kind of get situated with under my other tarp, and then I got my pack situated and got my poncho on and everything, and I put it on and I, I hightailed it pretty quick, a little out of breath. Uh, I was trying to get down off that ridge quick as I could down into the trees here because I I got caught about right on right right as I was cresting the ridge so anyway so I got that done and I don't even know if this poncho looks good if I got it set up right I have no idea I just threw it on and started going like about out of wherever you know <laughs> so we'll just traipse on here now Of this area right here. After this, I'll be going downhill a little bit. So I'm, I think I'm going to make this my camp. I'm going to tie off between my these two trees here with my tarp, and then uh, set my uh, poncho up as my hammock, and uh, kind of get ready for the evening. Get myself a good rest. Kind of play around a little bit. Got to watch the time on the camera. I used. Uh, half my dang first battery already today <laughs> anyway all right I'm gonna set up here let's see what she looks like all right so here's my uh, camp set up on my first night of my trek here <clears throat> got my uh, my blaze uh, poncho set up as a hammock underneath and I took uh, my coyote PST that's the regular size 7x7 seven seven, and I strung it up as a canopy <clears throat> Which means basically that I'm not I'm not anchoring any part directly to the ground, and I don't have support poles up underneath it. So I'm I'm just guide out on the uh, on top on the center tab, and I'm also guide out on the diagonal tab over here, which gives us kind of that open uh, open area up in there. So it actually gives me plenty of space, and with the uh, rainy and everything and stormy as it was yesterday and last night. Uh, gave me ample protection So as you can see the setup kind of looks like uh, the stingray setup that I've used in the past, but um, But in this case, I'm not using support poles up in the middle of there. So it's uh, it's kind of a similar setup plus this is a lot more horizontal and I've pitched it up in the middle just for because it was really downpouring so give me plenty of ability to uh, drain off the water as it comes in so it worked very nice, and uh, plus being pitched out pretty flat like that gives me a, a lot of space because I'm I'm 10 feet diagonally each way here. So when you got that much space underneath the the tarp, it uh, it gives you a real nice uh, gives you a real nice protection without having to go to the size of like say a 10 by 10 or something. And uh, and I've got plenty of plenty of area. Up inside the canopy here uh, <clears throat> very well covers my hammock and everything and plus gives me plenty of other space and uh, and that's a very nice setup here one other thing I did want to point out was for lighting last night I wanted to hang my if you're familiar with uh, mag lights you, if you unscrew the lens cap all the way it makes it like a candle so it gives light all the way around and so what I did is I have velcro up here that we normally use with a tent stake bag to um, to um, uh, Put a pole or whatever. I just took my fire starter kit and stuck the velcro of it to that velcro Then use a little car mini carabiner here to hook my light and then uh, and Then all I then all I had to do is just turn the light on like that and then I could sit in here and do a few things read and write some notes and stuff like that So that worked really nice 
and it uh, I'd been tinkering with something for a while I'm gonna make an accessory for the for the tarps that'll go in there that'll give you a, a velcro attachment that you can attach things up there well here I am had a nice sleep last night waiting here for the sun to come up in a little while I uh, had a really nice sleep in my hammock uh, so the nice thing I wore this as a poncho during the rain <coughs> yesterday I got here pitched up my canopy and then uh, peeled this thing off and uh, set it up as a hammock and then made it my bed so you know one one item I used it for a couple purposes I got so muddy yesterday I got mud <laughs> clear from clear to my knees this thick mud just cakes off of here so it was mucky and muddy and rainy and quite a mess yesterday but uh, I feel pretty good this morning uh, had a good night good night's rest and uh, gonna get ready to head out for the day I'm just debating whether I want to build a fire or not I don't know I might just I got my nano stove so I could just use the alcohol part and cook me something up and move on I don't know on the other hand there's a couple of things that probably could get dried out a little if I built a fire but I just don't know if I'm in the mood for going to the trouble of a fire right now <laughs> Every, everything's pretty wet so I can get one going I just don't know if I want to go to the trouble but we'll see how that goes <laughs> I gotta find the remote control to that camera I lost it here somewhere last night at it and it's black so chances are I'll never find it all right I went ahead and decided I'm gonna cook some breakfast so <clears throat> everything is is pretty wet around here due to the rains over the last week and yesterday in particular <clears throat> so what I did is I peeled off some of the peeled off some of the bark on this dead tree standing dead and then uh, there's a lot of things you can do actually that's pretty those are pretty dead right there but here's another thing my knife's even got some rust spots but you can put your hand like this underneath here I'll try to do this so you can see it But you can take a tree like this and you can cut you some nice dry curls. Get you some nice dry curls like those right there. Get you a good handful of those, throw it in the nano stove or whatever. Light that thing, light those up. Hopefully you can see those. <clears throat> Some nice curls right there. These are very dry, been under the bark, protected from the white rain and everything. Give me a handful of those, throw them in the stove, and that'll start us off a nice fire. Alright, so these uh, uh, shaving like this make some very nice thin curls. And uh, that's one of the keys to making a real good fire, uh, especially in damp weather. I get uh, I I I got a whole my whole stove here full of uh, these little curls like this. So just a little bit of flame on there, and uh, these things will just take right off and uh, get my fire started uh, very easily. And uh, to do this, uh, I have my my little fire starter kit with me, which uh, features a Doan magnesium fire starter, and uh, I have a little square of concentrator paper in there just to catch the shavings kind of keep everything organized and uh, so just a few shavings in there throw a spark in there and as you can see those uh, shavings just uh, catch hold of that and uh, take right off and um, so initially I just uh, uh, let that kind of get going and then I start adding some a few twigs and stuff like that to it so having uh, that stove clear full of those nice thin uh, dry wood curls uh, really helps me get the fire going. I can add my twigs 
even uh, even though that uh, some of that stuff is a little damp still from all the rain um, putting that in there like that will uh, will get it everything started well everything can dry out and then uh, and then I can start putting uh, the fuel in the feed ports on the side and I can really start doing some cooking at that point All right, well today, I didn't really feel like uh, building a fire this morning. And all the hassle of building it and putting it all out and all that junk. So, I just decided to fire up the nano stove and uh, and uh, just cook that way. That way there's minimal, I'm still using a fire, but it's very minimal, very easy to put out, uses very little fuel. And uh, I can use alcohol. I have a spirit burner that I bring with that, the Nano also normally, in our uh, one-person cook set. And uh, and this way, it's a nice, it's still a little fire. I'm using fuel rather than, uh, you know, wood fuel rather than carrying fuel with me. So that works really nice. So I'm going to cook me up something hot to drink here. And then, uh, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm gonna probably cook an egg in the in the cup in there. I don't know. I might I might poach it or hard boil it or something. I can eat it on the trail, something like that. I'm kind of anxious to get on the on the way here, and I gotta video a few things before I do that. So I'm gonna just let this cook for a little bit. I got some pretty good size uh, sticks there, about three quarter inch diameter. They barely fit through the hole right there, but so I'm pretty well stoked up inside there. I'm not gonna have to babysit this thing. Uh, it, it'll go on its own for a, a good little while here. All right, so that's all that's uh, left from my fire from the nano stove. And, uh, you know, pretty much just burned down to ashes. There's a, if I'd let it go a little bit longer, you know, I could have burned up the last little bit of twigs, but, you know, time it's all said and done, I poached my poached my eggs in a cup of water and then I just took that water that was left and dumped on here but but really there's virtually virtually nothing left no real no real impact here it's all pretty much grass in the area around here and I found just a little about a foot square that was just kind of some soil that's where I did my cooking and you use such a small amount of fuel and everything pretty well burns up to where there's really there's really virtually nothing left when you're done. So it's one of the nice things about using a small stove like like the nano stove or something like that. Use very little fuel so there's easy to maintain your fire, easy to put it out. You know, you don't have much to clean up after, not much to worry about. So Okay, I'm all geared up here. Filmed some video, did a little experimenting. Now I'm ready to hit the trail and head to uh, the next uh, set of lakes I'm going to. So I'm still upset that I don't have my hat. I normally have my hat, but you know, it's gonna be ugly. <laughs> but you know, we're on our way. Here we go. It's nice when you look up ahead here and see all the meadows and the trees and everything are going through in and out and uh, so we'll just keep on trekking here hey there's more water here on this little pond on the trail than there was in Lizard Lake I should have camped here <laughs> oh well we'll move on <laughs> Now we've got uh, a lot of grass, you know, knee-high 
knee-high grass and stuff like that in here where over there we didn't have much of that uh, so a little more lush over in here um, so we just continue on our quest here to the next uh, set of lakes we're going to I don't know why I keep saying we because I'm like kind of like by myself here <laughs> but it's very quiet other than when I'm talking all right so right over there is our next lake number two I guess technically so we'll pay a visit out to that in just a minute and uh, see what we find there well here I am to the next lake uh, like the water levels way down I should be standing in the water right now so it's uh, pretty low right now uh, thinking about doing a little bit of fishing but I don't know I see some pretty black clouds uh, out in the west headed my way uh, I think we're in for I think I'm in for rain probably a good part of the day I'd be surprised if it doesn't happen but you never know so let's just see what happens here all right so here's the next lake in my series this is number three let's see one Two, three, yeah. This is number three. As you can see, it's uh, water's way, 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 way down, and it's mostly algae and stuff like that in there. It's so low and so shallow. So I'm not gonna really mess with that lake much. <laughs> but I'm here. I did make it. I'm achieving my goal here. And you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful hiking and camping weather here. All right, so here I am at, uh, they call this one Big East Lake. So, once again, water level way down, but it's the end of summer. And uh, it's been a little bit of a drought, so. Been raining a lot lately, though. <laughs> but anyway, but anyway, I'm here. This is the last of this three, group of three uh, here. And now I got to head, uh, I gotta head down to the paved road and I gotta walk it for a little ways uh, so I can catch my connector over to uh, two more lakes that I plan to camp at uh, here tonight. So I best get on the on the road here. So anyway, it's been fun and it's nice. I uh, man, there's some really black clouds come this earlier today uh, on the trail and I thought man it's going to be a cloud burst all day today but they they're a little bit north of me here I can kind of see them passing by but so far I haven't got it so but I imagine a little later this afternoon will probably be raining like yesterday so I better enjoy it while I can <laughs> all right everywhere I've been the choke cherry trees have been about gone this one here is just loaded up. I'm gonna find something to put these in and I'm gonna pick me some. Uh, this will be good. Might be able to make me some, something to camp tonight. Well, here's the more boring part of the trip. <clears throat> I've got to, uh, most people don't come the, the direction I'm coming. Like if they're, uh, where I started out is in a different basin drainage basin and uh, But I wanted to come over and catch these several lakes over on this side So I crossed over into this other basin and at this point there's not Another trail to connect me back over without Retracing everything I've already gone on and I don't want to do that. So my other option here is doing what I'm doing right now Walking on the edge of the uh, of the uh, road up here through the canyon, the highway, well, two-lane road, <laughs> and uh, that's the best way for me to connect to the other basin. It's on down here. There's a there's a jeep road that takes off from here and then connects over, and then then from then I'll be back in that basin until I get done with my 
trek here, so so I don't know. I don't know how much video I'll do unless I see something nice. <laughs> but we're just trekking. Well, I've been <coughs> taking this gravel road here, this Jeep road or whatever, and uh, getting back into the right drainage. Had to come up over a ridge here. Now we're dropping down into where this next <coughs> lake is. Probably darn near dry, <laughs> I imagine. I don't know, everything's pretty low. But we'll see in, in a little bit when we drop down here. Well, here's, uh, here's the next lake. About, from what I can judge, we're probably 90% dry. <laughs> Not much there. But I am going to have to probably collect some water right down there. Before it's all said and done but we made it to our next one this is number six dry lake has more water in it than Steve Winwood Reservoir which is weird but I was expecting this to be dry as a bone up here but it's actually nice and I'm pretty freaking excited to set up camp I'm tentatively looking to go in the quakies down on that side of the lake there or and those over on that side one or the other string up my hammock get me a campfire it's uh it's about five o'clock right now so set up camp about 5 30 and chill for the evening well the bad thing about poncho that we make into a hammock it's way too comfortable I need to be up like well I mean I don't really I guess I got camp set up I got my pack stowed good for the night I'm really ready to go I just really need to probably eat something else eat like dinner maybe <laughs> I had an apple <laughs> but uh, I don't know you know you after you've been hiking all like I've been all day long hiking, so it's like it just feels good to lay down in here and take a little nap or just watch the, the sun's kind of just going down over the hills over there, over the mountains. I don't know, it's just so cozy, it's like I don't feel like doing anything else, so I guess since I'm in charge today, I won't do anything else till I feel like it. <laughs> anyway, we'll keep on going here. See whatever happens next. Okay, so my energy level is like way up. I'm really, you know, like ready to do some heavy duty cooking and stuff like that. I did bring cornmeal and all that. I've picked choke cherries that I could uh, make some biscuits out of and junk, and I'm just not in the mood to build a fire. So I have my go-to, whoops, well, I flipped some uh, fish oil on me so the bears will like that probably. Anyway, I just got a kick, I always carry some kippered snacks or something with me. Sometimes that's a, sometimes that's a decent little meal or part of a meal depending if you're on the run. And I'm pretending like I'm on the run because... I just don't feel like doing anything. <laughs> so, so I'm having that, a chocolate pudding. Um, I never do this when I go camping either. I took, I brought my own, I brought marshmallows and graham crackers with me. But who knows if I'll get around to doing that or not. Kind of whatever I feel like. <laughs> well, time to, time to eat some chow here. Well, it's another morning. It's the last, last day of my trek here, and uh, the sun will be coming up in a little bit here. Wash my face a little. <clears throat> I realized last night that I, somewhere along the uh, trek here, I lost lost a clothing roll off the back of my pack that I had. Um, there's a bungee cord. Uh, I might show you in a, in a bit. 
a bungee cord thing on there. I stuck them in there and somewhere it fell out and I didn't notice it. So I'm kind of stuck with what I got here. <laughs> there is a bone I'd like to pick. <laughs> and uh, I have, uh, this is a rocket pack by Snug Pack and overall I do, I do like it. Uh, I mean, I like the concept. There are some things I don't like. Um, one of those being uh, this. Now this is nice. This uh, shock corded section here to hold odds and ends or whatever. And I had my uh, Wilderness Innovation hoodie, uh, zip up hoodie, rolled up and stashed in here, and I lost it on the trail somewhere. It, it slid out of here. And I know that's, you know, that's really, that's my own fault. I, I trusted that this thing would, everything would be all right. Uh, I've got an old Jansport, uh, kind of a little overnight pack type of deal, kind of a light pack. It's got this same kind of setup on it. Never lost, never lost one thing in, I don't know how many years I've had that, seven, eight years. Well... One of the problems I don't like is I think that the shock cord's a little weak. Um, this is the shock cord that we use on all of our gear. And I know it's not brown or can't coyote, but but this stuff right here, you pull on that and you can. This stuff here is very very light compared to this right here. Now the biggest issue is this right here, and I I was going to change these cord locks out, but look at this. I can just uh, pull on it right there. I don't even have to press the button. I can I can go just like that all day long. Doesn't hold a thing. That's what happened was during the hike that just gradually loosened, loosened up, loosened up. This whole thing got loose enough to where the thing fell out and I didn't notice it. I think when I hit the next lake I might try to do a little bit of fishing. Maybe. <laughs> now, all I did yesterday was I got those choke cherries <clears throat> uh, up at the East Lake, and I got uh, about 10 pounds of choke cherries. So that was my fishing, I guess. <laughs> well, I was going to uh, cook on this uh, nano stove with wood this morning, like I did previous, but <clears throat> actually. Uh, I've actually got a bunch of things I uh, want to get done, and uh, <clears throat> and so I thought, well, this morning since I'm kind of I kind of got a busy day ahead, so I thought what I'd like to do probably is just use the alcohol stove. I have like <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> I've probably got 16 ounces of alcohol in my pack. <clears throat> so I have plenty of alcohol to use. I didn't know what the weather was going to be like, if I was going to have to cook under shelter on the alcohol stove or whatever. So <clears throat> so I brought plenty of it along with me. So I'm going to do this. That way I can, I need to heat up some water and cook a bunch of things, that sort of stuff. This way I can... Uh, film a few videos I can take my camp down everything and not have to worry about <coughs> feeding the feeding the stove so so that's what I'm gonna do that's what I'm gonna do this morning here one thing I like to do when I get in camps I usually like to rig up my backpack and hang it from a run some paracord around the tree and and a carabiner and hang it up on a tree so it's kind of up off the ground everything <clears throat> one other nice thing is in this instance is my canopy <clears throat> what I've uh, what I did is I uh, just let off on the uh, on the one uh, pull up on the canopy there and then I I cleaned out on my backpack and I got the contents sitting on there like a little shelf so since my packs there Right there, it kind of gives me a shelf space I can use to reorganize or to sort through things and, and all that. 
and uh, I think I have plenty of food that's a good bit of that a good bit of that is food up there <laughs> I think I have enough food for probably a week or so <clears throat> but anyway just another little tip you can use you know if you've got your canopy set up and you hook your pack you can use it as a you know cause sometimes it's nice just to have a place at waist level or something to organize things or whatever and hey it'll it'll hold the weight that's no problem so it's another little tip since the uh, since the poncho when it's made out into a hammock the hood is right there and we do have a snap on the hood uh, that snaps it shut and then we can pull the drawstring and draw it up and it makes a it makes a nice little pocket and uh, oftentimes uh, I put things in the pocket like this is the bag and the everything for the uh, inflatable pad I've got some some things in here out of my pants pocket stuff like that I just throw them in there you don't have to worry about them disappearing somewhere so I do actually use the hood um, I actually do use the hood uh, when I set my uh, poncho up as a hammock I do use it as a storage pocket well now, now I've been busy uh, filming a couple of videos and putting up part of my camp this has come to a nice full rolling boil and so I'm going to just pour some liquid off right there I can use for drinks or whatever this morning hot drink and I'm going to this water out of the lake is pretty I'm surprised it's pretty darn clear and uh, but I don't know with all the uh, cattle uh, drinking out of it since the spring I figure I'd probably be better off to go ahead and boil it I do have a little filter but I don't know this works pretty good if you notice on this little on our little mug here we actually uh, put some silicone tubing over the handles which uh, makes it so it's uh, it's really easy to handle it even uh, you get even if you get some flame over on here it's still still easy to handle the cup well adios dry lake heading to maple lake next uh, over the ridge here and on down and hopefully this trail takes me where I want it to go uh, so we'll continue on the trail I'll get a nice shot here of Maple Lake when we get around I I went out and scouted this morning but I didn't uh, I didn't have my camera with me so we'll get a shot of it here as we come around the come over the top and then down right there is uh, Maple Lake and that's our next destination here so we'll just uh, keep on heading down through the trail here see if maybe I get a better shot here in just a moment a couple guys just went through on mountain bikes here there we are right down there nice shot of it I don't know where this trail comes out I don't see it on the map but uh, uh, I have some indications that comes out on the south side of that lake somewhere so we'll be finding out in a little while well we're just going down this old trail here let's get used uh, mostly by horses it looks like a lot of people, a lot of tracks in here from horses, as well as, like I say, a couple mountain bikers here this morning. <clears throat> a lot of fallen timber in this area here, as you can see back through here. This would be absolutely brutal to try to come through this without being on some kind of trail that's maintained to some uh, respect wouldn't be impossible but it'd be brutal and that's why I was, I was yesterday I was going to try to cross cut over to uh, over to uh, Dry Lake and uh, 
windward like and I just it was just kind of like this and I thought I that'd be a, that'd be a lot to do <laughs> so but anyway we'll keep meandering down through here hoping this trail winds up back over to Maple Lake somewhere we're we're uh, southeast of it right now and uh, so anyway <laughs> hoping hoping it meanders that way which it's starting to kind of head that way now so we'll see what it does here that would be perfect if that's how it winds up well you know my last little video clip I said okay we're out of the steep part down into the maples I, I lied <laughs> I just fell twice coming down a couple pitches the the soil here is just all forest soil it's on the trail it's deep in places and you know you try to dig in as you go down and sometimes it sometimes it bites and sometimes of like an avalanche comes out from under you and psh, down you go so hopefully the camera's still working it took a couple nice nasty flings but we'll keep on going here well this is fantastic here uh, I had my worries that this trail wasn't coming out the right spot, but uh, right here up ahead is the uh, <coughs> edge of uh, Maple Lake Campground. Here I am. I'm uh, probably a couple hundred feet above the lake right now, so I have made it here. It's uh, it's 10:30, and uh, so my ride, Shauna picks me up about four. So I got time to kill. All right, I'm gonna set my bones right here and uh, relax for a moment. It's nice, I've got a little cool breeze that's kind of coming up off the lake here. A lot of algae in the lake this time of year, but that's the way it is. But uh, rest up, drink up some stuff, have a little snack, and then uh, I'll probably head down to the lake and see if I can throw a line out. Okay, so I'm out here on the edge of the lake here in the cattails and uh, pulling up a few of them. These, the bottom white part is very nice flavored. All right, so I pulled these, pulled these out. These are probably, probably not good as far up as, you know, maybe in the spring or during a more active growth period. Like I say, these were all, these were actually out of the water for a while here till recent rains. So mostly what I do is I just kind of, you feel where it's more firm and when it starts softening up, then I cut it right there and use the bottom part. <clears throat> but these right here, the nice white, that's, that's the part that was pretty much was down in the mud. That'll be, that'll be really nice. No flavoring from the chlorophyll or anything from you know exposure to sun sunlight so I rinse them off in the spring over here and uh, nice about 50 degree water coming out of the mountain all right well since I'm at the lake and uh, I have grill facilities <laughs> I got some wood and started me a little fire Cooking me off a couple brats that I hadn't eaten yet. Heating up uh, <clears throat> some water in these two. This one for a drink and these for kind of cleaning up dishes and that kind of stuff. And then over here in my mug, I've got uh, water almost to a boil here uh, with my cattails. So, I'll eat real good today anyhow. All right, so my water here is cooking. It's getting hotter. I've got my brats here. I uh, I cooked them over. They're not. These are not cooked on the flames. These are cooked just on just on the coals out here. But I've had them in my pack for three days. No refrigeration. Might might need to cook them extra good. And then in here I've got my cattails. Those are nicely uh, cooked. It's been simmering here. 
So I'm going to start off, I'm going to eat those, and this piece of bark here is going to be my plate. I put it over the coals just for a momentarily here and there just to burn off all the stuff on the undersides. It's nice and clean. Alright, so I've got my uh, got my uh, stuff here ready to roll. My brats cooked here. I'm using a piece of bark as a plate. I've got my uh, salt and pepper shaker and this and I like to use my mix that I've got I put on a video there a while ago but uh, these guys here ought to be just delicious mmm oh. very good stuff And you can probably hear in the background we got looks like we got a thunderstorm wanting to roll in here. So that'll be good. I'll get to get to wait for Shauna to come pick me up in the rain probably. Huh. At least I'll have a good meal in my stomach while I'm waiting. Hmm. Very good. A <clears throat> little bit of, a little bit of natural stuff, and a little bit of brats. <laughs> Enjoying it out here. Nice, nice cool breeze, kind of blowing in with the storm here. So we'll see what happens. Now, now here's the other thing about our one-person cook set. It does have has this bottle, as uh, you can use it for whatever you want. It doesn't come with anything in it. But I like it. It's a little dropper bottle. It's hard to get much out of here, and I, I wanted it like that because <clears throat> you don't want to have you don't want to have it. I mean, it's a Nalgene brand bottle, so I mean it's quality, but but you don't want it to easily just come out all over everywhere. And this won't. You got to squeeze it pretty good to get it to come out. <clears throat> but that way. You know, when you're out at camp or whatever, you got some soapy water. We do supply a, a scotch bright, so I can just kind of dip that thing in here. And what I usually do is, uh, it's probably a little easier for me to show you here than some of the other parts of camp. But <clears throat> what I like to do is, I just, uh, I just get everything you know, soaked up with the soapy water. And then, uh, then I'll get some clear hot water that I'll rinse everything in. All this stuff, all this stuff could use a little once over, so we'll give it to it here. But this way it's, uh, it's easy to do. And you can and you can use that dish soap, you know, you don't, it doesn't have to be just for, just for washing dishes. I mean, people want you to think you got to have 23 different kinds of soap. <clears throat> you know, you can, you can wash your own self up and all that with it. So, you don't, don't think, you know, you can't uh, use it for that. So, anyway. So I just wanted to show you that, and we'll scrub everything up, rinse it all off, and uh, we'll be good to go, ready to, <clears throat> especially use some nice hot water to rinse in, then set everything out, it'll all dry pretty quickly. Well, before I was buttoning everything up, <clears throat> I'm waiting for some of my dishes to dry here. So I should turn them upside down. <clears throat> Thought I'd make me a cup of paro here it's kind of a it's an all it's made out of grains it's all grain some people call it a coffee substitute I I mean it I think you can buy a coffee flavored but I don't it's just to me it's just a drink you can have that's not sweet and uh, kind of you know if it's cold weather or or even if you're 
you're just not thirsty just for plain old water. It's a nice it's a nice drink to have in the morning or the evening, that sort of thing if you know if you don't want to have coffee or you're not a coffee drinker. So <clears throat> I usually carry these little packets with me like this. And uh, this one has hot chocolate in it or chocolate mix, but I'll I'll put this in there with uh, the right amount for for about uh, 10 or 12 ounces of of drink, and then I put just a little bit of sugar, not much, just enough to take the edge off. And I pack it up like that in my pack, and that way uh, it's all right. I don't even have to measure it. I just dump it out, good to go. And I'm not too fussy about it. I can put I can put that amount in eight ounces or. 12 or 14 it still tastes <laughs> decent to me so anyway so that's just another little tip and uh, getting ready to uh, <clears throat> it's about three o'clock now so I'm gonna pack up everything here uh, back into my pack that I got out for dinner and for messing around at the lake I'm gonna head up towards the top of the campground there to campsite one and this probably string up my Poncho's a hammock and take a nap till Shauna gets here and it's nice and bright orange so she won't miss it. <laughs> She'll know that's me. Well I got up top to uh, do my waiting for uh, Shauna and uh, lo and behold the big thunderstorm came up. Uh, that hail and blowing wind and rain and all kinds of stuff it was crazy so I had to hide my camera back uh, inside my poncho here for a bit but uh, I weathered out the storm for about 45 minutes to an hour before she got there and uh, I'm good to go had a great trip <laughs>